Oh, love. I love love. Do you love love? 4444 will make you love love. By the way, this movie is a true story and the title simply means 4th of April 1944. That date is the day the life of a couple turned upside down. If you're ready, let's begin. We see Hillary going home from work. Is this some mass curators celebrating their festival? Watching them, the culture, he could feel how good it is to be back home. And that feeling reminds him of what happened 17 years ago. Then we were taken back to 17 years ago, the year 1943. His cousin Vincent came to pick him up. So on their way home, they discussed about the rumor spreading that Nigeria wants to break away from under British colonization. Vincent says, ah, that's foolishness. Why would Nigeria want to be independent now? It doesn't make sense. Eh, eh, by the way, talking about independence, your parents are talking about finding you a wife. Hillary says, see, that's the last thing on my mind. Vincent says, come on, having a woman by your side to support you is not a bad thing. At home, Hillary's father and his sister-in-law are discussing about a loan. She is there on behalf of her husband to borrow some money again to invest in another business. Then we see a beautiful young girl, Teresa, bringing yam for Hillary's mother. Then Hilary arrives. It's been a long time away from home now, so the mother was excited. The father says, I have a meeting. When I return, we will talk. And don't forget to go see Father Ketu, okay? As they were talking, Teresa was just looking at Hilary. So educated and handsome. Then Hilary also caught a glimpse of that stunning girl. Wait, she says, I will be on my way, ma. Hilary could not help himself. Mama, who is she? Hilary kept staring at the gorgeous specimen he just saw. Oh, love. A man that wants to focus on his career first. A man who's just said marriage is the last thing on his mind ends up falling in love at first sight. Well, let's go back to 1960. Hilary arrives home to meet his wife, Teresa. Yes, they got married. But at this time, Teresa is no longer the beautiful girl we just saw earlier. At least, not mentally. She is sick, mentally. She sits outside, half naked, only in her undergarments. But Hilary still loves her so much. In fact, to protect her from others, he moved his family to a new place and built a house with tall fences. He covers his wife and sits with her. Later, the community chief set up a panel for Mr. Hillary. There is a case on him. Mr. Nkem Jika is annoyed about something, saying, Mr. Hillary sits like a demigod, refusing to answer their questions. Ah, what questions? It has to do with money. This panel wouldn't have been established if you had not messed up the funds of the community. £20,000, and Hillary cannot account for £10,000 out of it. The district commissioner says, ah, uh -uh. he thought they invited him over to witness an inquiry and not an accusation. Mr. Nkem Jika, there would be no accusation here. Nkem Jika apologizes for the accusation, but then still went ahead to continue accusing him. Then the district commissioner got angry and stood up for Mr. Hillary, saying, Hillary has spent a better part of his life and finances in service to the community, repairing roads, funding businesses, creating wells for the community, all out of his own pocket. Making Hillary the head of the community trust fund is a no-brainer. Look at him, a good man. One of the others says, see, Oga, what we need is answers. The contractor says the money for the health center has been paid over a month ago and they haven't received their share. By the way, the government also said they have disbursed the money to Mr. Hillary. So, Oga, how far? Where is the money? Hillary says, um, yes, the funds have been received but they are experiencing the minor glitch that they are trying to resolve. Hey, glitch again. What does that mean, Biko? Inkem Jika faced the treasurer. Hey, please, can you explain what your boss just said? <laughs> Forgot just drink water. Now what? So, glitch has been causing serious issues in Nigeria since a long time. Quick disclaimer, 4444 is directed by Izu Ojuku and is currently streaming on Prime Video. 
This recap is for educational purposes only and in no way a replacement to the movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie in its entirety. Note that this recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are new here, you are welcome to join us. Don't be shy, please subscribe and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the Film Village. As soon as they got home, Hilary sees that Prince, the treasurer, is uncomfortable. Hilary says, See, Prince, come here. I need you to put yourself together. Prince says, Ha, I am the treasurer of the trust fund. When they find out what we did with the money, I'll be the first to be arrested. Hilary says, Don't worry. I will find a way to refund the money, but please calm down. Prince says, I, I cannot calm down, sir. I cannot. I don't even know why I got myself into this. Hilary says, See, you did not do a bad thing. Yes, and here we are, sir. Hilary asked him to bring all the community files to him, at least to protect them. As they were speaking, the district commissioner enters. Hilary still continued to tell the commissioner that it is not what they think. There, is, there was just a minor glitch. Oh, gar, Hilary, there is no panel here. This is you and I. Talk to me. He wants Hilary to tell him the truth. Hilary insists he has told him all he needs to know. The commissioner begs him to please tell him the truth. He wants to help him out, but he needs to know how to help him. After thinking for a while, but couldn't say anything, the commissioner then tells him that Mr. Inkem Jika will inform the CID to investigate and arrest Hillary. He could end up in prison. Hillary goes home that day, but from afar, he could hear that something is wrong inside. He rushes in only to find Teresa having another episode of a mental breakdown. You want to kill me? You want to kill me? She starts breaking everything around her with a shattered glass cutting his son in the leg. Hilary locks her up in her room and begins to cry. Now inside, Teresa was seeing strange and scary things making her scream like crazy. If you've truly been with someone having this episode, you would know this is not a good sight at all. Trust me, you just don't want to. It's really hard on them. She screams so hard, so hard that Hilary also could not help himself. He cries. Hmm. Love. Scary, eh? But the question is, what really happened to Teresa? What happened to her? Well, let's go back to 1943. We see Hilary runs to meet Teresa to woo her for the first time. After talking for a while, Teresa says, I have to go now. I know my parents will not like to see me outside, especially with a man. No, Jerry. Our parents know each other. Teresa says, no, just your mom and my mom. Hilary says, okay then. Promise me that you will allow me to take you to the Empire Festival in Calabar on Saturday. We can clearly see that Teresa is excited about it, but then she can't sort of remember something, then says oh, she can't, saying she has a lot of chores on the weekend. Then he says, I would like us to take a photograph. Really? Teresa says, but I thought photographs are expensive. Hilary says he has been saving up for a whole year just to take that photograph and he would like to take the photograph with someone he cares about. Hilary continues to push further, then Teresa says, okay, she will see what she can do. She asks him to wait for him at the station on Saturday by 3. Hilary leaves happy like a boy with a new candy. He then goes to meet Father Ketu. He informed him that he doesn't think he will be going back to work anymore at the shipping company. He says he wants to marry and settle down. Father Ketu asks him lots of questions. Are your parents pressuring you? Have you found someone? Are you sure you are not lost in after her? Oh guys, enough. Hilary is in love. She can Are you sure you've thought this through? Okay, tell me more about her. Hilary begins to narrate how beautiful she is, her smile. Hey, 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 slow down. You are talking to a father. Start with her name first. Then Hilary proper, proper tells father about her. In fact, one time, Hilary was so in love that he helped her sweep the entire church premises. That Saturday, they both attended the Empire Festival. Ah, love, such wonderful atmosphere. Then they had to take the photograph. When they got there, the photographer, a white man, had believed they cannot afford such expensive amount. See you. Money that Hilary has been saving for a whole year. <laughs> a whole 50 shillings. Hilary paid the money, says Father Ketu recommended him. Oh, Father Ketu. Stop laughing and get chairs for our customers, then he welcomed them. They arranged them in a beautiful setting for a black and white photo. Now outside, after the photograph, Teresa says he should sing for her. He sings. Then she asks him, so what other plans do you have? Hilary says, ah, he intends to help people. 
since independence is coming around, he wants to help people. Wait, you mean you want to become a politician? He says, no, ah, good, because I don't like politicians. They are all talk and no actions. Now, back to present. Hillary is explaining the work process to one of his staff when Gegen, the CID, arrives. He says he is busy. If they can do it another time, they say no, Allah. Eh, we will wait. Oh, um, all right. Yeah, let's talk about it now then. They say they are here for the phones, and they are here to check all the files. Hillary says the file is not in one place. That they should give him two weeks. <laughs> Mr. Hillary, you have till tomorrow. Hillary wanted to play smart here, but they know. Now at his house, even neighbors don't want their children to come play with Hillary's family. The crazy woman they used to say. Then we see Teresa smoking like an exhaust when Hillary enters. She says, Have you come to check on the mad woman you married to see if she has destroyed everything? Hillary says, He didn't marry a mad woman. She then asks him to get out. He refused. Teresa says, What? Or do you want to smoke? He says, Well, if it will make you happy. She gives him a stick and begins to cry. He hugged his wife and begins to console her. Her love. Later, Hilary tells his daughter Vero that today is one of the good days for their mother. He noticed that she's sad. Then he asks her, are you okay? Vero gives another excuse that Lillian has an incident with one of her schoolmates' mom. Actually, it's her. Her schoolmate's mom came to take her friend away from her. But she says it's her sister, Lillian. Hilary comforts Vero, then thank her. For what? He says she's a teenager. She should be out with friends and boys. But here she is acting the mother in the house. He truly appreciates the poor girl. But wait, is everything okay? The father says, what do you mean? She says, recently you come home from work, not your usual self. She noticed something is going on with the father. <laughs> My dear, Veru, your father don't chop community money. Anyway, don't say you heard it from me. Now, let's go back to 1943. One year before 1944, the D-Day. Hillary is leaving back to work. Teresa says he should please stay back. He can lie that he is sick. Come on, I can't say that. By the way, he says he will only be gone for two weeks. Teresa begins to cough. <laughs> Wait, is she pregnant? No. Hillary says, ha, you're only coughing because you want me to stay back and care for you. Teresa then asks, why do you love me? They both talk about love, lovingly. Oh, love. Oh God, take your bag. Take your bag. Take your bag. Ha, ah, love. He then lives on the boat. This Teresa is really pretty sharp. Her name is Efe Irele. And you can watch her other amazing performance in the House of Secrets on Prime Videos. But if you need a recap on the whole thing, we got you. You can find it on our channel. It's to get so much worse. Now back to present. We see Teresa in the room where they usually chain her whenever she is having her episode. She calls out to her children, Jude. She made them get the key to let her out. By then, Vero had gone to give her dad food at his place of work. Wait, Vero, who is with the girls? Who is with your mom? He quickly grabs her and starts rushing home. Now getting home, he meets Lillian sitting, carrying their last child. Hilary says, hello, where is Jude and James? They can't find the boys. They check the chain room, it's open, and both Teresa and the boys are gone. Hilary begins to search for them. Something is wrong. James! Jude! James! Jude! They begin to call out. Then he enters his own bedroom and there he found them all asleep with her carrying the boys on her chest. Oh, thank goodness. He is relieved. He greets her then goes to bed. The next morning, Hilary was woken up by beautiful classical music playing. He goes into the sitting room. He finds the children how happy. Then to the kitchen and finds Teresa and the girls cooking. This is a good day. He kissed her and then goes to attend to the door. Someone is knocking. It's his cousin Vincent that came to pick him from the boat earlier. Yes, he's around. Now, after eating, Hillary asks him when he would be getting married. Vincent says ah, he will marry when it is officially legal to marry 10 wives. They all laughed. Vincent then asks about Teresa and her health. Hillary says she has a break now. How long does the break last? Sometimes one day, a week, sometimes months. Vincent says no one even thought the marriage would last this long. In fact, her family would not be angry if Hilary decides to take another wife. Hey, I beg, I beg, change topic. Vincent says, regarding the health center, how come such amount of money was missing? Hi. 
my goodness. Hillary changed the topic again. He doesn't want to talk about the money. Take note that until now, we have not yet known what he did with the money. But be patient, we will find out. Hillary changed the topic from the money to Vincent's work and then they begin to laugh. Now back to the past. Hillary's father and that his brother's wife is around again, trying to borrow money again for another business. Habba. The man says he has been giving them money every time. How come their business never take off? She promises that this time will be different. They are going to pay him back. He says, although he cares for them both, but he can no longer give them any money. He says maybe if they had children of their own, they can learn to prioritize better. Eh? If we had children, that statement made her hungry and then says, is our childlessness our fault? What about you? If having children were that easy, why didn't you have more? You only gave birth to Hillary. Then she leaves in anger, saying, that's even if you are the father of Hillary. Eh? Tell me something. Teresa was on her way there. She heard those words, but pretend as if she did not. She just enters, saying, is Hillary back? The father says no. He has a delay on his second trip. He will be back later. The day Hillary is to return, Teresa is already at the harbor waiting for him when, hey, what is this? She sees him lifting some fine girls out of the boat. In anger, she leaves. Hillary quickly runs after her. He, oh, I even thought she was angry, Seth. She says she misses him. Hillary says she will be seeing more of him henceforth. You are just telling me what I want to hear. After marriage now, you will change. Wait, marriage? Does that mean you have finally agreed to get married to me? She sheepishly says, maybe. My parents like you. Hillary is happy about that. Then he says he will take her to meet his parents also and tell them they want to marry. Are you sure they would like me as your wife? Of course now. Nah. She then asks him about the girl he was lifting earlier. Hillary says, I have got eyes only for you. His focus is on her and how he can help his people, his community. Oh yeah, smile for me. What is this Oya oh yeah, you keep saying? Oh, that it's one of the numerous slangs I learned on one of my trips to Lagos. Every man on the ship kept saying, Oya, oh yeah, my luggage. Oya, oh yeah, my wife. <laughs> like, Oya oh, supposed to mean something. So, Oya, oh yeah, let's get married. <laughs> <laughs> Oya, oh yeah, let's continue. In 1960s again, Hillary arrives home to meet his wife sitting outside as usual. She starts walking towards him. First question she asks is, where is the car? Oh, it's at the mechanics. Is this one of the good days? I guess so. Veru, their daughter, is watching them from the window. So they both sit down to talk. She asks about the community center. Hilary says, work is going on well. She then asks him, You? How are you? He says he is good. And he appreciates that she asks him, Wait, you smell so good. Teresa says, It's the perfume you bought for me the last Christmas. Oh, was it only the perfume I bought for you? Hilary is getting naughty. <laughs> you got me undergarments too. Oh, I wonder what colors they wear. You wanna come inside and show me? Hey, Hilary finally finds an opportunity to show his wife. Oh dear, love. I love love. The share I went inside to knock. Hilary's younger brother's wife was lambasting her husband for not taking issues up with his brother, for insulting them for being childless, saying maybe the brother is the reason why she also doesn't even have her own children. The man just gently walk away. He has no time for that woman wala. Now one day while driving with Teresa, she starts talking about how painful she hears sex is. That wouldn't it be better if they just adopt instead? Funny girl, he says, don't worry, we will cross that bridge when we get there. Days later, he meets with her father to ask for her hand in marriage. Hilary then says he promised to love their daughter forever. He asks if he means it, then says he should come with his family then. That is the proper way to ask for a woman's hand in marriage. Come with your family. They offered him food and they laughed and joked about it. Now, the year is 1944. April 4th, 1944. The wedding day. Remember this woman coming. The childless one. Now, watch what she did to Teresa. While she is dancing, this woman goes to her, uses a white handkerchief to first wipe her body, then gives her something to drink. That is the day her problem began. 
she poisoned Teresa. Lead poisoning. Actually, Teresa survived that initial poisoning, but it had already attacked her brain. She did not die, but the effects of it is a mental retardation, all caused by this wicked woman. Now let's go to 1960. One morning, one of the good days, Teresa is saying her prayers when her daughter Veru walks in to tell her goodbye. Veru will be traveling for a while to write her exams. The mother bless her, gave her some money and then thanks her for being a mother to the whole family when she couldn't be. Veru then asks her, okay, what happened to the woman that did this to you? Wait, so she knows about it. Teresa says, don't have that look in your eyes. Vengeance is not yours. Forgiven her. I, I have forgiven her. But I will never, never forget. The mechanic then returns the car to Hillary that he was unable to get a good price. Apparently, Hillary wanted to sell the car to recover the missing fund to pay back the community. Now the CID are now going through the files. Wait, we asked for the documents pertaining to the community health center. This is for a borehole. Hilary says, yes, the borehole was a project he did for the community about two years ago and it cost him about a thousand pounds. The transformer was the one he bought for the community and it cost him two thousand pounds. The CID officer says, are you trying to ask us for a refund? Hilary says, he's just trying to make them see that he spends a lot for the community out of his own pocket. Now they are on him just for £10,000. As they were talking, Mr. Inkem Jika walks in with a police officer. He says he is there as an observer who is out to make sure that this rubbish is get out of my office. The community insists that the investigation is too slow and taking too long, so they want to monitor it themselves. Hilary briefly looks out the window and he sees something. Excuse me, excuse me. He goes outside. His youngest daughter, Lilian, running to tell him about their mother. A episode has started. Then we see her banging her head on a pillar. He quickly sits beside her, calming her. This is one sad scene to watch. She even slaps him severally. Hilary is enduring a lot, I tell you. Now, there are, but it is hard to find people who could go through this in their life. Can you? Can you? It's hard, right? Anyway, Hilary was able to calm his wife, his loving wife, Teresa. Later, he goes to the bank to try get a loan. The bank says unless he puts his house as collateral, without that, they cannot grant him a loan. Then we see him at a bar drinking when a district commissioner joins him. He wants to buy him more beer, but Hilary says he is okay. Hilary then asks why the commissioner asked to meet him at the bar. Why did you ask me here? He says he has a friend from the CID. And he told him that Mr. Nkem Jika is pushing that the court subpoena the document from Hillary. He can help, but he truly needs Hillary to be straight with him. He should tell him the truth. Then drunk Mr. Nkem Jika joins them, but the commissioner stylishly discharged him. Hillary then says, he has been given much more money before. So anything that will make me dip my hands into public funds is inescapable for me. Wait, so you took the money? A man then joins them, advertising some prostitutes. He calls them foxes, advertising some foxes to them. He says, Hillary needs a real woman for once. A mentally stable woman. Hillary grabs him by the neck. He says, the next time you speak about my wife again will be the last time you use your mouth. Then he goes home to meet his wife and kids standing in the rain. The episode has started again. Teresa says she is tired of all this. She wants to die. She has not been a mother to the children and a wife to her husband. Little Lilian was just watching that sad moment. Vero arrives the next day after her exams to meet a strange woman at their house, sweeping. Eh? Are you here to see somebody? The woman says, no, I live here now. I'm your dad's new wife. <gasps> Does this mean Hillary finally remarried? She drops her bag and runs to meet her father. His staffs were already complaining that the bank is not giving them their salary. When Vero arrives to challenge him for marrying another woman, Hilary says, no, he only brought her in to help after Vero left for school. Did you marry her? He says, no. Are you going to? He says, no. He says, he is sorry and will fix everything. Then as she leaves, the CID arrives with the court subpoena to provide the necessary documents or else he will be arrested. 
he goes home and then sends the woman away. Beru also apologized for speaking that way to her father. The next morning, she comes again to tell him, Daddy, mommy is missing. He gets up and starts searching for Teresa. He goes to meet Vincent and his boat starts searching for her. By the way, none of his workers even know he is married or that he has a wife. Hilary then confesses to Vincent that he was the one who took the community money. He used them on Teresa's medical bill and to invest in a business that later failed. He said he had no choice. Oh, okay, since Teresa is missing, perhaps this is a sign that it's time for him to move on and remarry. The conversation got heated and he sends him out of his office. He goes out to continue searching for his wife when the CID arrives to arrest him and seal up the factory. Now, Hillary was released on bail and he calls for a meeting with the community. As he stands up to speak, first, he confessed that yes, he spent the community money. And as he speaks, Vincent, his cousin, arrives with a white woman. Everywhere was silent at first. But then he continues speaking. He says, although he had always used his own money to help the community, that does not justify his actions to spend the money that doesn't belong to him. And therefore, he is ready to face whatever punishment from the community. Hmm. The community leader then says, if he is able to pay the money, he will be forgiven. So, Mr. Hillary, would you be able to pay the money that you borrowed today? Hillary wants to speak when the woman stood up. She says she's a family of Mr. Hillary and she has a check to give to the community, a check for £7,000. Nkim Jika was just filming that, no, the money is £10,000, but the community freed Hillary, saying they give him one month to pay the remaining 3000 Wait, who is she? The lady then introduced herself to be Elizabeth Ketu. Her uncle, Father Ketu, sends his regard. He was the one that sent that money to Hillary. Now on their way home, Vincent tells him that they have found his wife and she is at home waiting for him. Oh, he arrives home, seeing her, the boat hog. She then apologizes for running away. Now, Father Ketu sends him a gift. The picture they took on the festival day. Finally, Hillary is free from the debt and the debt was actually paid by Father Ketu. Remember we said earlier that this movie is a true life story? Then we see the real Veronica that has been telling us this story from the very beginning. She narrated the whole story in an interview she had on the night they were celebrating the love story of Teresa and Hillary, her parents. Then the movie ends. Love. I love love. I love true love. And when someone plans to endanger our love for no reason whatsoever, only true love can conquer. For example, what did Teresa actually do to this woman? She did not even hurt the boy directly, she went for the wife, an innocent girl. Now, not to be a pastor or something, but this reminds me of a favorite quote my mother always tells me. She says it from the Bible and it says, Whether there are gifts of prophecy or tongue or hope, all this will fail. But love, love never fails. Hillary's love for Teresa never failed. That is why I love love. Now to conclude, I want you guys to know that I truly love you. I see your comments and I appreciate them. And please, if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. We have more amazing content on our channel just for you. Please do enjoy. Until next time, I am Sam and this is the Film Village.